Hello everyone, uh, I'm astronaut Charlie Duke. I was lunar module pilot on Apollo 16 uh, in 1972. Okay, let me take a picture for you, Charlie. Where at? How much? Uh, that's okay. Uh 12 people in human history have walked on the moon, and only four are alive today. He's the youngest. And this is a moon landing denier that Charlie's about to react to for the first time. Because I've spent the last week hearing out every theory about why the moon landings are fake. Do you believe in the moon landings? No. No. I don't really believe in that. They could be real, they could not. With 18% of people thinking it's fake. There's a race between America and Russia, so they kind of faked it. It's cat. It's fake. No, I don't. They could have been AI, nobody knows. And some conspiracy theorists feeling really strongly about it. Check out the Joe Rogan podcast or anybody that's got the video. But when their feet are like in the air, it's like, come on, man. Charlie's going to debunk the four most common conspiracy theories today. But first, let's hear how he actually became an astronaut. In September of 60, 65, there was an article in the LA Times said NASA's looking for another Greek for astronauts, so I applied and uh, got selected. And we reported in in April of 66. There were 19 of us. Charlie started as a member of the Air Force, and after applying and getting interviewed by the first American in space, Alan B. Shepard, he was selected by NASA to be an Apollo astronaut. Pictured here is all 24 people that took part in the Apollo missions. There's Charlie, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and everyone else. These men had a very special task they would be, and still are, the only people in human history to travel beyond low Earth orbit. They started geology training right away, uh, within a couple of months, mm -hmm. and uh, we were picked for Apollo, so if we went to the moon, we were supposed to know what kind of rocks to pick up. So we started just extensive geology training that for me lasted for six years until I flew to the moon. Oh, oh. how are you guys doing? We're doing fantastic. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Oh, no problem, man. My pleasure. Christian is our first moon landing denier, presenting the first theory for Charlie to debunk. How much fuel exactly? This is a new one for me. Like, some engineer did the math, and they're like, it just doesn't add up. They, they should have a lot more fuel if they're going to go all the way to the moon in that big hunk of chunk. It just doesn't add up. They should have way more fuel. Okay. Uh, the fuel budget, we had a fuel, we had limited fuel. You had enough fuel to go into lunar orbit to slow down. Going to the moon, you don't burn any fuel. This, I think, is one of the most commonly misunderstood parts about space travel in general, and probably the reason it seems so impossible that we'd be able to go to the moon in the first place. It seems so high tech to be able to take a rocket all the way to the moon when airplanes have to refuel at every airport. But what people fail to realize is that once you start going in space, you don't stop. There's no air resistance because there's no air. If I threw a tennis ball at the moon from space, it would just keep going unless it hit something until it got there. So as soon as the rocket is going fast enough, it can just point itself at the moon and it won't stop until the pilots turn on their anti-thrust to slow them down once they've reached their destination. That's just how traveling in space works. When you get to the moon, you're going probably 6,000 miles an hour thereabouts, and you have to slow, but that's too fast to go into orbit. And that trajectory was designed because you had only limited fuel in the service module. They shot you out in front of the Earth, and it took you 72 hours to get there. If they just fired you right towards the moon, you got there in 12 hours. But you're going so fast, you can't don't have enough fuel to slow down. So they fire you way out in front, so gravity slow, Earth slows you down. Then when you get started getting to, to lunar gravity, you start to accelerate, but you're not going too fast that you can't slow down with the fuel you have on board. All this was designed, planned out, right. and then get out of orbit and come home. The crew aimed the rocket to pass in front of Earth after finishing its orbit, therefore catching a little bit of Earth's gravity and slowing it down. Earth's gravity slowed it down just enough where when it reached the moon, it wouldn't have to use nearly as much fuel to get itself slow enough where it would be able to make a safe descent. Unless they did bring a ridiculous amount of fuel like Denier Christian is referencing. But since Christian is right and they didn't, this was the method NASA scientists spent years developing to allow them to get to the moon on such little fuel. Christian isn't right, of course, that the whole thing was faked. When you look at that technology, 
I, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. It's so insane how many people don't believe in the moon landing. These people fall into the conspiracy theory rabbit hole, and social media platforms just continue to serve them what they want. But there is a site in an app called Ground News, founded by a former NASA engineer that I'm partnering with for this video that gathers related articles from thousands of sources around the world in one place to create comprehensive story overviews. Each article will also say on top of it the site's political bias and factuality which is the general reliability of their reporting, as well as what the company is. For example, this story is about how scientists want to put cell samples of endangered species on the moon to protect them from extinction on Earth. You can see the four left-leaning articles, five center articles, and four right-leaning articles, and see how the headlines differ, with the left-leaning ones mentioning climate change and the right ones calling it safekeeping. Why wouldn't you want to get the news this way? This is important stuff to know. With Ground News, my new source for news, I know exactly where I'm getting my information and who's the real source saying it. So scan my QR code or go to ground.news slash Gordon for 40% off the same Vantage plan I use for unlimited access to all their features. And thanks again to Ground News for sponsoring this video. I've never looked into what cameras they were using, but it seems kind of odd that uh, at least there's no like, there's literally no sources of light outside of what's directly in front of them. Almost like it is a sound stage. You know, the lights are directed directly down on them. This is an interesting point. When you imagine space, you generally think about all the stars in the sky, but in the moon landing photos, you don't see any. The sky is darker than my heart would be if I found out the moon landings were fake, which luckily they aren't, but this still doesn't make any sense to me. Here's what Charlie said. Well, it's not true because the sun's shining. You're on the moon and the, the brightness of the lunar surface is really overwhelming. So you had two sun visors on and the sun is shining all the time when you're on the moon. It gets a little confusing because the sky doesn't turn blue when it's daytime on the moon like it does here, but that's just because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. The reason we don't see stars during the day on Earth is the same reason we don't see them on the moon. It has nothing to do with the color of the sky. Our sky only appears blue because the molecules that our atmosphere is made out of scatter the white light that is the sun into a blue shade. When you get to the moon and you go behind the moon and the night on the moon, you look out and you can see the stars. But if it's day on the moon, right. this, and you're standing there, you look up and you don't, it's black because there's no atmosphere but it's the sun shining, so you can't see the stars. So on the dark side of the moon, you can see stars because it's nighttime there. The bright sun is on the other side of the moon, but where the Apollo astronauts landed and in any part of the journey to the moon, whenever you are within direct sunlight, it's too bright to see the other stars and the sky appears black. Now, with all the evidence from LRO, photographs taken and seeing the lunar module in a car on the moon. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter he's referring to here is a robotic spacecraft currently orbiting around the moon that has been orbiting around the moon since 2009. It's got three cameras attached to it and it's taken pictures of all of the Apollo landing sites from the air since then. But these moon landing deniers aren't gonna buy it because these pictures are still from NASA and they ignore everything NASA tells them. People are willfully ignorant if they don't believe that we landed on the moon. In fact, we talked to some moon landing deniers that were ridiculously extreme. Hello. Hello. Hello, we can hear you now. I can't hear you, I've lost that, I can't. I don't know if it was other for me. We're here to talk about the moon landing, so we'd love to get your thoughts on them if you want to just go for it. The moon landing is an incredibly fickle fit, my wife. Oh. Hello, can you hear us? Mic broke. Oh, your mic broke. Why don't we just call him? Hello, this is not the person you were trying to call. You've reached the rejected hotline. Unfortunately, the person who gave you this rejected hotline number did not want to have their real number. You know, this sucks, but don't be too devastated. Christian from earlier did have one other point that I had Charlie react to. And then there's also the spacesuits. Dude, if one of those spacesuits ripped, you know how screwed they are? It's like 100 degrees different, man. And then they're like all walking around all happy, like, dude, you should be a little bit scared, man. You should be a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easy to insulate a spacesuit to keep the sun's heat out. But what's the problem in a spacesuit 
is the body heat. You're in this little refrigerator working like crazy and yeah. you got to get rid of the body heat. The body, without the cooling garment we had underneath the suit, you would have seat stroke in about 30 to minutes to an hour. Yeah. Working on the lunar surface. So we had a, what we call a liquid cool garment that we wore underneath the suit. And once you got zipped up, you could turn on a little pump and it pumped water through these tubes. Body heat kills you, not the sun's heat, because the suit is protected. This is a cover of a, of a spacesuit glove and it's made so that it's not gonna be abraded away yeah. and will hold the pressure. We had enough water in our backpack to last eight to nine hours. So the whole idea was to pick up the body heat uh, through this radiator system that was a pair of a long underwear and take it to the backpack where there was an instrument back on the backpack called a sublimator. And you push this water through the sublimator and it was exposed to vacuum and phew, it all went off into space. The water and the heat. What did you say when you first landed and when you first stepped on the moon? Well, I can tell you what I said when I first landed. It was, old oh, Orion is finally here, Houston. Fantastic. Oh, Orion is finally here, Houston. Fantastic. You know, the lunar module never had to have a speech when he got, he, we were always second out. Mm -hmm. And so the commander had the little speech. Neil Armstrong had this little speech. And then Buzz Alder didn't say anything. He just jumped out. Well, I, that was my feeling. I just jumped out and started being ecstatic about, I'm on the moon. I'm on the moon. Okay, the camera is running. The 16 millimeter is running. Outstanding. Outstanding. You could see all these major landmarks around, you know, and it was perfectly clear because there's no atmosphere on the moon, so you had no haze or anything like that. Just uh, all the way to the horizon, all the way around, it was a sharp break between the lunar surface and the blackness of space. The things Charlie did on the moon are amazing, but as he was about to leave, he did something fun. So we were gonna do the moon Olympics, and we were decided we would do the high jump and maybe the broad jump. So anyway, we start to bounce and my backpack or the life support system weighed as much as I did. So astronauts walked with bent over to keep your center of gravity over your feet. So as I was bouncing, I now I gave a jump and when I did, I straightened up. Well, my center of gravity went backwards and over I went. Wow. Charlie, that ain't any fun, is it? And that was only time in the whole flight I had fear. And, but fear is not a bad emotion if you don't panic. So I'm going over backwards and the thought occurred, roll right. And I rolled to the right and I broke my fall on my right hand and my right leg. Bounced onto my back and I'm flat on my back and there's the earth right up there and I'm, my heart's pounding, but I'm still alive. And uh, I looked at my pressure gauge, it said normal, pumps were pumping and I said, I'm, I think I'm okay. And uh, John Young came over and looked down and says, yeah, that wasn't very smart, Charlie. That ain't very smart. And I said, I know John, help me up. And uh, so he helped me up and uh, my heart was pounding, but I'm still alive. Mission Control has seen this high jump record, but they didn't like it. They said, that's no more Olympics, guys. <laughs> didn't get, get to do the broad jump? No, we didn't get to do it. Uh, they, they canceled the Moon Olympics. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and I'm thankful they did, because uh, never do anything in space you hadn't practiced down here. But Charlie still had one more moon landing theory to react to. Why haven't we got to the moon uh, after 1972? It doesn't make sense because there are a lot of people, a lot of billionaires, a lot of rich countries, especially here in the Middle East, that are ready to invest to be the second country or the second nation to, to reach the moon. The question can be answered very simply. Apollo was so successful that they canceled the last three missions, 18, 19, and 20. They wanted to start building the space shuttle, and that took all the NASA budget. And they just finished this most successful program, so why go back to the moon? Well, the shuttle lasted for 20-something years. It first flew in 81, and it was still flying. Uh, and then right after that, 
they went to uh, the space station to make a, a, a science laboratory in Earth orbit, which was a whole, all the nations of the world participated. All that took all the money that NASA had. And so that's why it's been 50 years because all the money went into these other programs. The best part about all of this is that NASA is finally ready to return to the moon with the Artemis missions. People have already been selected to be the ones to return to the moon. Let me know if you want a video interviewing them. And this time, the footage they send back won't be grainy black and white. All of this is in preparation for the first human to Mars mission, which is currently scheduled for sometime in the 2030s. And it seems like people are itching for it in order to believe it's real. So keep your eyes peeled and get ready because the next few years are going to be fun in space. To be an American, I'll tell you what a program and what a place and what an experience.